You, Chalky, will never be a ski instructor as long as you live. Those words were said to me 40 plus years ago. At the time, he was a senior ski instructor and me, just a lowly ski bum. Has anybody ever said anything like that to you? Like, for example, you'll never be able to do something. There's lots of well-known, famous people in the world that have gone through that and become masterminds and revered in whatever field they decided to go into. It's got to be the right dream or the right goal that we actually really want to achieve. Because if it's not the right goal, then the chances of us following through and succeeding are pretty remote. So it's got to be something that is in us that we really, really believe in. I'm sure we've all had something like that at some stage in our lives. And the other part of the scenario is, aren't you too old to do things like this? Aren't you too old to have those kind of dreams? Well, it's only comparatively recently, and I'm not that far short of 70 now, that I decided that I wanted to be a speaker. So, in my opinion, as long as you've got your health and your strength, you can actually achieve anything that you actually want. So what is a naysayer? A naysayer can be somebody, an external a person, who says, oh, you'll never manage to do that. You know, that's impossible for you to do that, even when something is probably completely feasible. But who do you think might be, could be, the biggest naysayer in your life of them all. It could be you. We all, all the time, have these dreams and think, oh, I'd love to be able to do that. And you go, nah, maybe not, because, because, because. But you, what, we, what we have to try to do to achieve our dreams is to have that passion to say, I will follow through, I will follow through, and I will keep going. Well, the teacher appears when the student is ready. And it might take a long time. My mentor took years and years and years for him to come and, and really help me just exactly the time when I needed it. Just to sum up this part of what I'm talking about, the whole thing comes down to those three major things not allowing the, 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 the naysayers to grind you down and saying, I don't care what this guy or this gal says to me or what I say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, whatever it might actually take. And then following through, following through and never stopping asking the question, even when people are saying no, 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 no. So I basically languished in the police for 11 years. I did loads, lots and lots of partying, had a, had a great time, lots of vacations, but it wasn't the dream. But I, some very interesting things, of course, did happen to me. Tragic, funny, strange. For example, one day I was out walking a beat with another Officer Jim McCarthy, I still remember his name. And we get this call over the radio. They just about come in there. They run by gas still, of course. Um, and the call came out, old lady not seen for three days. So we go around to this address. And we used to, I used to work in this place in Kent called Chatham. And we used to call their accent there. We used to call it Chathamese. And this lady said, says to us, we haven't seen her for about three days. If she was going out somewhere, she'd have told us. So anyway, we're going around to all the windows and banging on the windows. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones, come and answer the door. No reply. So one of us gets out a nightstick, because police don't carry guns in England, as you probably know. And we smashed the window, and in we went. My buddy Jim went upstairs and I was downstairs, and after a few seconds, Chalky, up here! And there she was, dead in bed. And we stand there deciding what we're going to do. And he gets round one side of the bed, and I get round the other. 
and we pull the sheet over her face, when all of a sudden, the sheet goes down. Gotcha! You thought I was dead, didn't you? But I was just having a kip, which means asleep. Go and make me a cup of tea. <laughs> so we did as ordered, and I think we needed it to calm the nerves just a little bit. <laughs> and then it happened. Maybe one of the shortest but most important questions I've ever been asked in my life. Hey, Jorky, do you want to go skiing? I said, yeah. Put my name down. We had a plan. And the plan was to learn to ski a little bit and then get in our van and drive all the way to South Africa. Which to give you some idea of how far that is, it's a bit like driving from here all the way to the bottom of Argentina with lions and tigers and elephants and everything else in the way. Well, that journey never happened. Why? Passion. You couldn't drag me off the ski slopes. I'd be the, almost every day be the first one up there on the hill in the morning and they'd pretty much be having to kick me off of the hill at the end of the day. All I wanted to do was ski and ski and ski. I started to look at, looking for jobs, but I didn't want a job in England. Definitely didn't want a job in England. So I started scanning the papers and I still remember this ad. I can remember it word for word. It read, supplying educational materials to the United States military in West Germany. So I go to this interview and I walk in this room in this big hotel in the middle of London and there's about 100 people sitting there. When this guy comes out and comes onto the stage, he starts doing his demonstration. He starts bringing out all these big kind of sheets of paper and stuff with writing on. And it was like rats leaving a sinking ship. They were literally running for the doors. And naive me was wondering, what's going on here? And then I realised it was supplying educational material, OK? But it was selling encyclopedias door to door. I wouldn't do that, would I? <laughs>